So now that we've got the uh, problem all laid out and the cross-sectional properties done and all the various components of load calculated for the particular cross-section in question, now what we want to do is to go and calculate the individual stress components at point A. Remember where point A is on the x-axis up on the, uh, the cross-section AA. So we're going to break it up. We're first going to go through all the different normal stress, stress components you could have and then look at each of the possible shear stresses. I'm going to start with an axial load calculation, axial load, and I'll write down the equation for that. So in this case, axial load for us would be in the sigma or the z direction uh, is equal to P in the z direction divided by A. And in this case, we know that there is no P at z. So it goes to zero, and so we can say that we have no uh, normal stress in the z direction. Okay, and then we go on to, to flexure, and so we're just going to do bending. And we'll do two parts, initially x, and so we have normal stress due to bending. Be in the x direction is equal to negative our moment in the x direction times its distance in the y-axis divided by i about x. In this case, when we look at that, we see that a is on the x-axis, and so it has zero value for y. And so we're going to, once again, get a value for zero. And that basically is because it is on the neutral axis. And we'll look at bending about the y-axis. Again, causing a sigma x. In this case, it's due to our moment about the y-axis. And then it would be the distance in the x-axis from the neutral axis. And i sub y. Of course, i sub y and i sub x are uh, the same here because we have a doubly symmetric section. And so we have values here that we're going to substitute in for our moment about y. We have negative 3 times 10 to the fifth Newton millimeters from our diagram. Our distance from the neutral axis is 20 millimeters. And that's divided by I, which we calculated at 1.25.7 times 10 to the third millimeters to the fourth which gives us a value of 47.7 megapascals, which implies it's in tension because it's a positive number. Then we want to look at the possible three shear stresses that could be caused. Now we'll start by uh, doing our shear in the x direction. Shear in the x direction. So if we look up here, our shear force in the x direction. It's a negative x direction, which is the 1500 newtons. But tau equals VQ over IT. And one thing to remember is that your I is the IYY for shear in the x direction and vice versa. For shear in the x, we see that A is actually at the extreme fiber, which tells us that Q would go to zero. And so we would have zero shear stress resulting from that. Then we go on, do shear in the y. Tau equals vq over it. And shear in the y direction in this case, so we see that that's the thousand newtons in the positive y direction. Q, so A is on the neutral axis, uh, xx. Uh, so we would have Q for the neutral axis, and that's 5.33 times 10 to the third millimeters to the third. And divided by I, which we saw was 125.7 times 10 to the third millimeters to the fourth. And our thickness in this case, because it's on that neutral axis, is the full diameter of 40 millimeters. And we're able to calculate that to be a shear stress of 1.06 megapascals, which we know to be uh, right or on the positive 
y direction. And finally, the last possible uh, shear stress would be caused by torsion. We do have a torque in this case, so torsion. Uh, the formula for shear stress due to torsion, TR over J. This would be the torque in the Z direction. Of course, J about the Z axis. And so this would be equal to, we go up here, we look and we see our torque is 6.0 times 10 to the fifth. That's Newton millimeters. Our radius to the extreme fiber, 20 millimeters, which is where our point A is divided by J, which is 251.3 times 10 to the third millimeters to the fourth. And that calculates out to 47.75 megapascals. Now, when we look at our torsion, of course, this is using our right-hand rule, we can see that that's moving counterclockwise around the cross section, which is to say that our shear stress when it gets to point A is going to be going in the positive Y direction. And uh, like the one above it, so because these are both on the same plane in the same direction, uh, they're going to have to add together when we get to compiling all this because that's what superposition tells us. I've added the diagram here of the cross section. We see point A marked. And what we're going to do is we're going to transfer our two, our shear components over to point A. So we'll start with the normal stress. We see we have a single normal stress in the Z direction uh, due to bending about Y. So I'll draw it in. Okay, and that's at 47.7 MPA. And then our two shear stresses are going in the same direction, uh, so they need to, to be added to each other. So in this case, that direction is in the positive Y. So I draw my shear stress in here, and that's 48.81 megapascals. I'm just going to draw the differential element for point A over here to the right and see if we can't put our stresses on there. So we have our normal stress. Of course, if we have our normal stress here of 47.7, it also has to be equal and opposite on the other side. There are none in the x and the y direction. However, we do have that shear stress that was drawn in of 48.81. And of course, it needs to be matched. on the other two faces, and we can see how we get our plane stress element.